Hello and welcome guys on the, my flight field. I want to do a proper FPV antenna range test today. For this I have my test trick with me. Easily mountable FPV antennas on top. Also testing the Micro Swift here, which is total over... Do you call it overkill? <laughs> on bigger quad? But you will see the image quality in flight. On the trusty old Shugong. I removed the gimbal in front to have some more flight efficiency. Uh, of course now the center of gravity is far in the back. This thing has an OSD so it tells me how far I flew. So I will basically fly with 25 milliwatts as far as I get and just read the OSD. This is the setup. I will once again use the FR632 with only one receiver used, the better one. Uh, cabled to the dominator, recorded on DVR here. Have the same antenna here and on the ground. And see how far we get. And those are the new ones I'm curious about. Those are my most used. The TBS Triumph is as well. And some standard rubber duckies. I think we should start with them. Being the worst case, not range-wise, but with uh, reflections and with bad signal on turns and so far. So, start with this. Okay, let's start this all the way down there and see how far we get. Okay, so I will try to fly to the pointing to the smokestack. And sorry about the skewed image, this is some incompatibility between the FR632 and the video transmitter. Oh, and the first video glitch after 140 meters. But so far it's good. 230. Yeah, image so far is good. Yeah, but it's getting ugly here. Not too sure about this. I have the antenna facing straight and now my quad is also straight. Uh, that's about as far as I feel comfortable. Let's say 420 meter, which is not too bad after all with 25 milliwatts. Uh, with this large building to the left, you get a lot of multipassing now here. So that's why even with 100 meter we have some reflections, some ugliness. I expect the other antennas, the circular polarized, to be better. So, okay, I'd say switch the antennas fast and get it up again. Okay, second test with the Aomway SPVs on both sides. Trying to fly the same pass as before. Maybe I'll fly a bit fast, faster this time. Once again, excuse the jumpy image. It's not the fault of the cam. The cam, by the way, is the Micro Swift. It has a really good image. I will show you a recording directly on the Fat Sharks later. So, noticeably better. Better image this time. But it's starting to degrade, but in another, in another kind with the SPVs. 
So really amazed. This is about where I had to stop with the rubber ducks. 122. Ah. And we're getting things. Altitude. I feel comfortable flying a bit further with them. Actually I have to use the attenuator not to fly too far. But you see a totally fine image with some degradation. Those ground flying with being over the runway here. Yeah. So you definitely see the difference between SPV antennas, between circular polarized and the rubber duckies, you just wouldn't want to use them. Now the critical area where you have lots of multi-passing reflections, they are still there but uh, they are not as terrible as with the SPV, uh, with the normal rubber duckies. And also the train looks different. So 25 milliwatts, 200 meters, with a possible reflector here on the right side. It's okay. Ah, here I had some, but they're definitely not as bad as before. Okay, so now let's see how good the Triumphs are really. I heard they are not the best for range, but they should be good in avoiding multipassing because they have a better axial ratio, whatever. We will just see how they perform and hopefully you can decide for yourself. Trying to go with some speed this time because the TBM Triumphs are used to fly speedy go down there to the haste, uh, to the smokestack kind of feel a bit more degradation uh, actually pretty good I'd say This is where the first problems also occurred with the SPVs from the AOM way. Actually, no, range isn't bad either here. So yeah, I really need to take the next battery then with with the attenuator and artificially reduce the range to see the benefit or the gain of the antennas. So let's also try the triumphs here. Sorry really for the jump image, I don't like this. I wouldn't feel comfortable flying all the time with this jump image. And see how the triumphs really work here. What good of a job they do with rejecting the multipassing and yeah it looks good okay looks maybe similar like the like the Aeon ways maybe even better so it's always important to test consistently yeah it's really getting shaky and windy but multi-passing is nicely reduced by the triumphs so maybe the range is not fully as but I didn't see this either maybe lower range but better multi-passing re rejection nice
Okay, so this time the pagoda. Just see if we can go all the 500 meters with the pagoda without disruption as well. Okay, so trying to fly the same pass down there as well. Prepared to get a shaky ride. Hope the wind is not beyond my speed limit. Image other than these skewed lines. I had some issue halfway through. But it's really stable all the way up to here. But it's really a great image. You start to see some color noise now. Yeah, definitely good until the allowed 500 meters. Actually very good. Only an extreme tilting like now. Grades a bit. I like it much. Okay, really nice here in close squats as well. How is the multi-passing? I see the lines. I see some multi-passing. But really minimal. Yeah, there was something. Now on the turn. Try to do a slow turn. Almost none. So they really are good. Because this is a critical pass here with the large building. Now you had some. Yeah. There is some, but really minor issues. So you really have to decide on the comparison side by side. Oh, there were some. If it's better than the Triumph or kind of the same. I think they have more range though than the Triumphs. So. Okay, I tested all of them and I'm drifting because I'm not in GPS mode. switch to using the attenuator now and what the attenuator does is like an electrical resistor uh, you reduce the signal that's going out to the antenna so I will do this on the transmitting side so we see the gain of the receiving antenna this antenna will not have much of an effect with the attenuator it's a 30 dBi attenuator if you guys know what this does so there will not be much of, of a signal coming out of the antenna anyway, so I just used the linear polarized and send a reduced signal from however far, I think like 50 meters I come with this and I'll then be switching receiving antennas over here so this makes it kind of faster for me and let's see how this works Okay, so we start with the rubber ducky antenna over there Let's see about this some color noise. You definitely see that the transmitting antenna is missing now, so to say. Ah, ah that was actually a good estimation of me. 50 meters, now I'm at 70 meters. Just have to see if it's... Yeah, I can go further over the field, looking towards me, yeah. not having the best signal at all. So I'm gonna switch while flying, which is not a good idea, to the Aeon way antenna now. So, how's the image with a arm Oh, it's better, okay. So, does it have more gain? I'm not too sure. Moving further. Uh, 
No, it's really not my kind of flying if you don't see anything. 90 meters, and it comes in waves that it is an uh, ugly, ugly image. So I try to go away. Coming back from these 120 meters. So flight tests are always a bit more difficult, but they're more practical application, I guess. So once again, change the antenna, this time to the Triumph, and see about its gain. What wanted to descend? Why? Okay, so we're up in the air with the Triumph. I'm gonna fly backwards. Try to see if I can reach the 130 meters. the image. Ah, it's really on the edge of being flyable. Ah. So you see maybe it's a bit less of range you get. Also in 10 meters of height, 120 meters, no. I want to come back. So I'll try to come back. Okay, so I did change to the Pagoda. have to keep the quad in mind. It struggles with the wind. And flying away backwards. 50 meters, 60, 80. It kind of catched up. No. I don't see much range benefit here as well, so 120 meters, maybe it's better here now. Do we have more gain? I'm not too sure. I could push it some more, but really flying almost blind. It's a good exercise though to judge how, how far you can stress out your signal. But I'm more comfortable with, comfortable with totally stable image. So I don't see the Pagoda performing that much better here in this limited range test with the attenuator. Okay, so with the lighter shoe gun, here I had around 15 to what's up. Is this some sort of early autumn here going on? No? No, it's just the dried out bloomy things. So with the reduced weight here, I could fly some longer, like 15 to 20 minutes, which is nice for testing. Please, ah, I will change uh, to recording directly from receiver in the goggles because there's not an issue then. So I will do one more flight with a diversity setup directly from the goggles as a comparison. On the quad though it still will be the attenuator. I'm not just curious if the image is better with my quantum diversity module in the fetch arcs. I shouldn't have this skewed image that I have on the FR632. The, the image looks better on the goggles. Still some shakiness in the OSD going on. So 
can see and try the diversity setup if we can push the range limits or if I'm not sure about the diversity or the receiving strengths of the modules uh, it's also not the best but it looks more stable though because it now has two things here 150 not sure what do you think is it better we will have to compare when i come back now with 14 volts yeah it's nice Gotta wait for this. They are not the new Wanda antennas, I guess, the Pagodas. They seem like uh, definitely an upgrade to the a ways that I like to use so far. I think they had more range uh, on the normal flying, but I hit the limits of 500 meters with 25 milliwatts already. But I think you really saw the difference here on this building being the reflector and producing some multipassing where it normally disturbs the image with standard antennas. So yeah, that's that's why everyone uses circular polarized antennas anyways. The new Pagoda ones are definitely good. The TBS Triumphs seem really good at reducing reducing the multipassing as well. Uh, I don't think they have that much, ra that much range, but if you're flying uh, speedy, uh, close quarters, races, I think the range is not the issue, but more the stability and the durability. So for pure races, maybe you should go with the Triumphs. Still, they are too expensive for my taste. The Pagodas uh, look quite durable as well. I'm not too sure about how easy these plates break. Um, yeah, and the Omways are still fine. If you got those, I'm not too sure if I recommend upgrading from the Omways to the Pagodas. Yeah, maybe if you need the last bit of quality image, get them. They are, I think, $13, $14. They're quite cheap. I was really uh, curious to see this comparison. Hope you liked it as well. Leave me some comments. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot to improve in this testing. Those tests are not very scientific, sorry. Uh, I want to point out to Bruce's and Joshua Bartwell's antenna shootouts. They are, Bruce has a lot of technical background, Joshua as well, of course. They have some more technical insights for you. So mine was just the more practical approach here. Um, yeah, just, just see. Uh, go further to these videos if you want to know more. Thanks for watching. Leave me comments. I already said this. I really enjoy the comments. Actually, I turned off monetization because one or two dollars for such a video, it doesn't help that much. And it's not my motivation at all. My motivation is sharing knowledge, uh, sharing my findings. I just like this. And getting in touch with the community, getting response, see what you guys think. So thanks for watching. Subscribe if you didn't. I'm not sure what this bell thing is about, so hit this bell uh, quite hard. <laughs> That's what all the YouTubers say. I see the numbers going down a bit on my channel. Maybe help me and share my videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.